Church Going by Philip Larkin Once I am sure there's nothing going on, I step inside, letting the door fud shut. Another church, matting, seats and stone, and little books, sprawlings of flowers cut for Sunday, brownish now, some brass and stuff, up at the holy end, a small neat organ, and a tense, musty, unignorable silence. Brood God knows how long. Hatless, I take off my cycle clips in awkward reverence. Move forward, run my hand around the font. From where I stand, the roof looks almost new. Cleaned or restored? Someone would know. I don't. Mounting the lectern, I peruse a few hectoring large-scale verses and pronounce, Here endeth, much more loudly than I meant. The echoes snigger briefly. Back at the door, I sign the book. Donate an Irish sixpence. Reflect the place was not worth stopping for. Yet, stop I did. In fact, I often do. And always end much at a loss like this. Wondering what to look for. Wondering, too, when churches will fall completely out of use. What we shall turn them into. If we shall keep a few cathedrals chronically on show. Their parchments, plate and picks in locked cases. And let the rest rent free to rain and sheep. Shall we avoid them as unlucky places? Or, after dark, will dubious women come to make their children touch a particular stone, pick simples for a cancer, or, on some advised night, see walking a dead one? Power of some sort will go on in games, in riddles, seemingly at random. But superstition, like belief, must die. And what remains when disbelief has gone? Grass, weedy pavement, brambles buttress, sky, a shape less recognisable each week, a purpose more obscure, I wonder who will be the last, the very last, to seek the place for what it was, one of the crew that tap and jot and know what rudelofts were, some ruined bibber, randy frantique, or Christmas addict, counting on a whiff, of gown and bands and organ pipes and myrrh, or will he be my representative, bored, uninformed, knowing the ghostly silt dispersed, yet tending to this cross of ground, through suburb scrub because it held unspilt, so long and equably what since is found only in separation, marriage and birth, and death, and thoughts of these, for which was built this special shell. For, though I've no idea what this accountred frowsty barn is worth, it pleases me to stand in silence here. A serious house on serious earth it is, in whose blent air all our compulsions meet, are recognised and robed as destinies, and that much can never be obsolete. Since someone will forever be surprising a hunger in himself to be more serious, and gravitating with it to this ground, which, he once heard, was proper to grow rising, if only that so many dead lie round.